wireless uh, product we want to present here, it's ULXD Wireless, it is a digital wireless system. Uh, we've released a couple of new form factors of this show, but I want to present to you the entire family because it's, it's now complete. So just so you get a little bit of background, the single channel receivers were launched at NAM, which is now at about was that nine months ago. And now we've just added the dual and the quad receivers to the range. Just to give you a little bit of overview about ULXD and then particularly the, the digital side of stuff. Again, we I think we all agree that wireless is much more prominent in not just the traditional rock and roll and theatrical and TV applications, but we see it everywhere from churches to houses of worship and education and boardrooms and corporate AV. And even those channel counts go up. So what everybody's consistently talking about is packing more channels into less spectrum because spectrum is a sparse commodity. We know the mobile regulators want their hands on it, but so do we because the UHF bands are very good. So, you know, I think for the past years there's always kind of been this, the promise of digital. If somebody does go digital at some point, does it actually, you know, deliver more than, uh, I suppose, a traditional radio system? So we've been working for a while on ULXD and uh, it's, it's turned out, I'm, I'm very pleased with what it does. So, first and foremost, it really does set the bar in terms of RF performance. If we want to just start looking at channel counts in its normal mode of operation, so at 10 mil, ULXD will put in excess of 20 channels, kind of depending on you know, where and what we're doing, but it's about 22 that you can put into 8 megs quite safely. But I think the key here is we're now sending digits rather than sending you know, FM or amplitude modulation. So naturally the audio signal, once I'm talking into you know, the microphone capsule, whether it be on the handheld format or the body pack, gets digitized here. And we use a proprietary form of phase shift keying. Don't know if everyone's familiar with it, so PSK. And um, it, it is literally a digitally modulated system. There's several benefits of this. One of them is naturally the channel count. Uh, the other one is lack of intermodulation products, so we can actually start using even spacing. So I don't know how familiar everybody is with frequency coordination, how it works, but very much how you have uh, fundamental notes in music and harmonics. Radio mics behave in a very similar fashion, so you can have fundamental frequencies and harmonics thereof. Once we get into the digital realm, we don't have to worry about the intermod calculations so much because we're only trying to recover the data on the other end. So we can start using even spacing. So in the normal mode, we could just go 300K, 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 and just keep doing that. If I did this with an analog system, I'd shoot myself in the foot very quickly and start getting some uh, pretty nasty interference products. The other one is the overall range and stability of the signal. So if your analog carrier gets closer and closer to the noise floor, we know that the noise starts creeping in and ultimately you get the hiss and the dropouts. As long as there's any recoverable data on the receiver and you still have a perfectly clean full audio band signal. So there's no repercussions as the signal stability or you know the goes lower into the range. As long as there's anything in terms of bits that's recoverable, you have perfect audio. It's not until you go below the noise one, then of course the system just goes off. The other one in terms of RF efficiency, we've added a separate mode into ULXD that comes along with the duals and quads and is now available in the singles as well. It's called high density mode. So we do a couple of neat things. We first off force the transmitters to go into one milliwatt output. We force encryption on. Uh, we do a couple of other neat things in the receiver in terms of the RF side, but this takes RF efficiency to a completely different level, and I think that's what we can see here is that into a single TV band, we can put over 60 channels right now. So if I take these receivers and do a full bandwidth scan on them, which is 64 megs, I can in clean spectrum put over 500 channels into 60 odd megs of spectrum because we further reduce the... Uh, the spacing between channels. So in high density mode, we can program transmitters evenly in 125k steps. And um, there's a great video if you want to see this at the Shure headquarters. We put 100 channels into literally 12 and a half megs. And um, again, this has to do because of the, the digital, it's all digital what we're sending numbers, but also the lack of intermods. So the intermods naturally, you know, as laws of physics, you're still going to have them. They're just so far down in the noise floor that you're not worried about them, and that's not what you're recovering on here. 
Other things that stand out is audio quality. So naturally, again, people for a while have talked about once people go digital, you don't need a compander. So ULXD is compander free. It's a very transparent 20 to 20 audio, so 20 hertz to 20K. It, this is starting, this is, you know, plug a cable into a guitar or plug a cable into a ULXD pack. It is a very, very natural reproduction of the actual acoustical signal we're trying to get to the other end. And with analog systems, you can never quite perfectly recover the audio because you always have the RF and you get noise on the carrier and ultimately then on the receiver end you have a bit of noise on the audio. In the digital system, this is completely gone. So we are perfectly recovering uh, what's on the other side as well. A few things to mention in terms of practical use. Uh, all the packs don't have your traditional gain and sensitivity settings anymore. We use uh, what's called gain ranging. Um, gain ranging sends, basically the transmitter can automatically send and detect one of two amplifier channels. So each transmitter will send a high gain amplifier channel and a low gain amplifier channel. The receiver then builds a composite signal of these two on the receiver end. And it takes, if you compare it to something like HDR photography, one of them takes the saturation and the other one takes the color and you overlay the two to build the best picture. So we use one of the amplifier channels that has the maximum dynamic range on it and we take the other amplifier channel which has the lowest noise floor in it and combine them on the receiver end. And this is how we still maintain over 120 dB of dynamic range in the system. So uh, this is another huge jump over some of the analog systems. The dynamic range is massive. If we incorporate the Dante output from the receivers, which is available on the duals and quads, the dynamic range is 144 dB. So it's way beyond the, the clip point of you know, the actual microphone capsule even. So it's, it's just absurdly uh, large on this. So gain ranging takes away the need to actually set transmitter gains. We can remotely control the gain now from the receiver because remember we're receiving the two amplifier channels in here so we can just literally adjust the gain for the transmitter on the receiver or if you want to add an extra step to it through internal networking and wireless workbench software which obviously ULXD works on as well. And um, finally, the feature set, there's several additions that we've taken from our Axiant family. So the rechargeable system that you're familiar with from Axiant is implemented into ULXD. So these cells use a different form factor, but what's in them is 100% the same as Axiant. The reason the form factor has changed is to support also the traditional use of double A's inside the pack. So we can use dry cells or rechargeables. Three options to recharge them, either this eight bay for just the batteries, uh, or you can do the um, tabletop charges. You can just chick, uh, stick the transmitters in, they'll just RF mute the second they feel anything on the contacts. So again, imagine your corporate situation, somebody could just pull this out and it's ready to go immediately and it can just charge overnight. Um, we've also included, as I mentioned, Dante digital outs on these, so it can easily get incorporated with I believe it's probably close to about 180 licensed Dundee products today or brands out there, um, as well as audio summing, which takes all inputs and allows us to sum them into any pairs of outputs on the receiver. So there's basically built in two and four channel mixers as well. And on top of that, we've also taken body pack frequency diversity from Axiom. So you'd be able to double pack somebody with two body packs match up the pairs in the receivers and if you get interference on one pack or the other because interference detection is built into the receiver the ULXD receiver can swap between active uh, body packs automatically as well so there's quite a bit that we've taken from the ULXD side as well uh, from the Axiom size pardon um, in terms of what's been implemented in here but I would say by far it, it really comes down to the RF performance and especially when you start implementing eye density mode across for example a university campus so I could start zoning out you know, literally over a hundred channels of wireless and lecture rooms, stick them all across IT, have, net, you know, uh, campus-wide networking and monitoring, but probably most crucially, fit every single one of my radio carriers into eight megs 